So corruption, corruption. Well, for thousands of years we've had corruption and it's never been easy to fix that. But that's in the real world. However, in the world of computers, fixing corruption can be a little bit easier, especially fixing XFS corruption. And I experienced XFS corruption just the other day. I rebooted my server only to find out that I had some file corruption, so I thought it would be a good idea to record myself fixing it and talk through how I did it for those of you out there who haven't had to repair XFS before. Ok, so the first thing we need to know after we've found out that we have XFS corruption is where it is. Well, when I booted up Unraid it told me that I had corruption and that it was on disk SDH1. So I'm going to keep a note of that and put it to one side. So with that noted down I'm going to go to the web UI on my Unraid server. But before we start doing a repair we need to check which version of Unraid that we're running. Now make sure that you're on a version of at least 6.7.0 or newer. This is because we need to have XFS Progs version 4.20.0 or higher. This is because there was a bug in some of the earlier versions of the program that could cause failure when doing a repair. Ok so with that said, now let's go back to locating the disk and finding out which drive is SDH1. And as you can see, the disk SDH1 refers to my cache drive. Now one thing to note is that the drive will only be referred to as its SDX name if the drive isn't part of the array. And by that I mean such as here this drive is the cache drive or if it were an unassigned drive it would also be referred to by its SDX name. With the exception being an NVMe drive. Now a drive that is part of the array would be listed differently. For example, take my disk 2 here. If that one had corruption, it would be listed as MD2. The MD part referring to that it's an array drive, and then the number here 2 means that it's disk 2. So MD2 refers to the second data drive because the parity drive, even though the array is an XFS array, the parity drive doesn't actually have any file system on it at all. So there are a few different ways your disk with the corruption might be listed when there's a problem with the XFS file system, just depending on its location in the server. Oh yes, here you can see that my drive is mounted, but you might find that your disk will not have mounted due to the XFS corruption. But it's really important that when we do an XFS repair that the drives are not mounted, so make sure you stop the array and then start the array in maintenance mode which starts the array without mounting the disks before you attempt any type of repair. So with my array now started up in maintenance mode, I'm going to see if I can fix the file system on my corrupt cache drive here. Now there are two ways in which we can make an XFS repair, and both ways use XFS probes to do so. Firstly, there's the easy way using the Unraid Web UI, and this is good for both data drives in the array and for cache drives. And secondly, we can use command line. We'd need to use this for making repairs to unassigned drives, because at the time of making this video, the web UI can't run a repair on unassigned drives. So to repair the XFS on my cache drive, I'm going to use the built-in tools in the web UI. So I'm going to go across to where my drive is and click onto cache. Now obviously if you're repairing one of the array drives, you just click onto the disk number 123 etc. Ok so here we can see the properties of the cache drive. Now I always think it's a good idea before you start a repair just to scroll down and have a look if you can see any smart errors. Now on this drive everything looks fine, so let's go back up to the top and you can see here where it says check file system status. Now at the moment you'll see that there's a hyphen n in this box here. So whatever's in this box here is the flag which XFS probes which the web UI is using uses to process the XFS repair. And by default what is here is the hyphen n. And what this hyphen n does is basically it just does a dry run 
and it tells us what it would do if it was going to repair the XFS file system. So leave it like this and do a run like this first. So just click on to check and then it will check the file system and see what the damage is and see how it would actually go about repairing it. Now to view the status you may have to click refresh a few times to see it. So scrolling through here I can see all of the corruption on the file system and what it proposes it's going to do to sort it out. And now at the very bottom we can see it says no modify flag set which was the hyphen n and skipping file system flush and exiting. So there have been no changes made to the file system at all, it's just reported back what it's found. Now if we wanted to actually have more detail about what it's found, we could run the same command but adding on the V flag to the end, which will give us much more detail as it will run in verbose mode. Now obviously you don't have to do this, but the function's there should you want to use it. And at the bottom here for example you can see a little bit more kind of information. You can see how long it took to run the repair and how long it took to run each phase. Now I say run the repair but again it hasn't actually repaired anything because the no modify flag was set. So to do the repair we just run it again but without a flag. So we get rid of the hyphen n. Now if you want to run it and have a little bit more detail while it does the repair you can use the flag just hyphen v. So that's how I'm going to run mine now. So I'm going to pop that in and then click on to check. And just as before you're going to have to press that refresh button to check the progress. Then just scroll through down to the bottom. And here we can see the XFS repair summary. And for me it's completed fine without any errors. But that isn't always the case for everyone. Sometimes when you do an XFS repair you may get an error that looks like this. What this error says is it needs to load the log and it can't. It recommends to mount the drive and then unmount it and try again. Well you can try and start and stop the array and see if the drive mounts. If it does then you can start back up the array in maintenance mode and try again. You can also try and mount the drive manually but to be honest if it doesn't mount with the array start then this is unlikely. But if you wanted to try and mount the disk manually this is how you'd do it. So to mount a disk manually again make sure you've got your array started in maintenance mode and we're going to need to open up a command prompt and the first thing we need to do is to make a directory to mount the drive to. So for that we're going to type mkdir space forward slash and then the name of the directory. I'm going to call it tempxfs and next we want to mount the drive so we're going to type mount space forward slash dev forward slash md and then the number of the disk and I'm going to mount this one here disk 3. And again a space and then forward slash and then where we're going to mount it to which is the name of the directory we just created and hit enter. Okay so now that's mounted. Next we need to unmount the drive. So for that we just type umount forward slash and the name of the directory and hit enter. Then afterwards we just clean up the directory we just made with rmdir then the name of the directory. Now one thing to notice with manually mounting things is this disk 3 that I just mounted manually then wasn't an encrypted disk but this disk 2 is. Now there's one caveat with mounting manually so let's make the directory again and this time instead of disk 3 I'm going to try and mount disk 2 which is that encrypted drive here and unfortunately we can't mount an encrypted file system manually. Basically to do that the array must be started normally. So if you were able to mount and unmount the drive then go back and then try and run the XFS repair again and then hopefully you won't get any errors. But like I said earlier it's really unlikely it will mount manually if it didn't mount when you started the array. So what to do if you can't mount the file system and replay the log. And so what we have to do in this situation is to destroy the log file. And we do this by running the XFS repair using the hyphen capital L flag. You can see here that it says destroying the log may cause corruption. Now to be honest the chances of this is really minimal and there shouldn't be any problems and you should be able to mount the drive fine and access all of your data. Now there's another problem that's really rare but can happen sometimes. Is during the XFS repair it kind of freezes and won't go any further. Now an XFS repair process can take up to a couple of hours to complete depending on the circumstances. So don't confuse it just taking a long time with it actually being frozen. Well should it freeze and not go any further, well in this situation it's perfectly safe to just stop the XFS repair, click cancel 
and then you want to rerun the repair with the flag hyphen capital P. This flag disables the prefetching of inode and directory blocks which can sometimes cause it to stop and not get any further. So once you finish the XFS repair, I suggest that you do another check with the flag hyphen N just to see that everything checks out fine. So for me here everything checks out fine and my XFS repair was successful. So now I can go back to the main tab, scroll down and stop the array which is currently running in maintenance mode. So now I can start the array normally, so obviously this time not checking the maintenance mode here and just clicking onto the start. So with the array started again normally, I now have repaired the drive and all of my files and folders are available as normal. Now the corruption I experienced on my cache drive wasn't very severe. Now when there are lots of files that have been corrupted and XFS repair can't work out where they should go, they're moved into a folder called lost and found. But the file names inside of the lost and found directory are not the original names of what the files used to be. That's because there was no way to map them back to a file name, so now they're just named by the index node of the file instead. So now you'd have to manually work out what each file is in this directory. So like I said, I was lucky with only minor corruption, and so this folder wasn't created and no files like that put inside. OK, so that's how to repair XFS file systems using the web UI, but at times you might want to use command line. For instance, if I wanted to repair this drive here, which I use for my CCTV recordings, then I couldn't use the web UI. Basically, clicking on here, you just don't have the option. So again, to repair using command line, the drives must be unmounted. Now if doing an unassigned drive we could just unmount the drive and leave the array started. But I think it's far safer just to unmount the array anyway and start it in maintenance mode just in case you've got something like a docker container using this and it just keeps everything clean. So I'm going to stop my array now and now I'm going to restart it up in maintenance mode. And this way none of my array drives, cache drives or unassigned drives are mounted. So let's say we need to fix this drive here, the SDI. So we're going to have to open a command prompt. So we need to type xfs underscore repair and then space and now we put in the flag. So I'm going to put in forward slash n so it just does a dry run and doesn't change anything. And then space and then forward slash dev forward slash and for this drive here, SDI, I'm going to type in SDI, but we also have to put the partition number as well. So I'm going to put 1, because obviously there's only one partition here. So now I'm going to hit enter. And we can see it does exactly the same as it does when we use the web UI. It goes through these checks. Now obviously this drive is clean and everything's fine. But if it wasn't, I could just run the command again but without the hyphen N. But again, nothing was really done because there was no errors there in the first place. OK. OK, so that's how we can run XFS repair on an unassigned drive. And now let's have a quick look at how we'd actually do the same but on an unassigned NVMe drive because we need to know the partition number in order to run the command. So let's jump back across onto terminal and let's have a look at what the device is called. So for that I'm going to type ls forward slash dev and I'm going to look for this drive here. And so we can see here's the NVMe drive. So what I want to do is I actually want to run it against this here which is NVMe 0, N1 and then PL1 for partition 1. So I'm going to paste that in here running that same command on partition 1 of the NVMe drive. OK, so that's how you run XFS repair on an unassigned device working directly on the actual disk. Now there may be times when you want to run by command line XFS repair on the actual array itself. Maybe you've tried actually repairing it in a web UI and for some reason it didn't work, so you want to attempt to do it again by command line. In most cases you can do this and everything will be fine, but when you do do it there's one rule to note, and that is when you run the command that you shouldn't actually do it on the disk itself. You can see here I'm running it now on SDC partition 1. 
Now the reason being, if you run XFS repair on an array disk and you run it on the actual disk itself like this, then it will invalidate your parity. So always make sure when you run it on an array disk that you run it using MD then the number of the disk. And in normal circumstances when I hit enter this would run fine. But when I hit enter now it's not going to run fine because I'm actually running this on an encrypted disk. And this is what happens when you try to do that. It can't find the super block because of the encryption on the disk. So this is the only time we can't actually use command line to run XFS repair, is when we're trying to do it on an encrypted disk. For that we're going to have to use the web UI. So for an example of how to run the XFS repair using command line on an array disk, I'm going to have to pop across onto the other server and run the repair on an unencrypted disk over there. Okay, so on this server here, this disk isn't encrypted, so let's try running the command on that. So, of course, my array is in maintenance mode, and let's open up the command prompt. So let's type xfs underscore repair space hyphen n space forward slash dev forward slash md3. And you can see on a normal disk, it runs absolutely fine. And of course it goes without saying that when we're using command line we can use the same flags as we did in the web UI. We can specify things like the hyphen L to destroy the log file if we need to. And me just mentioning that's made me remember something I wanted to say before I finish off the video. And that is basically if you've got a disk that has really really important data on and you find it doesn't repair easily when you just run the normal XFS repair. So for this example, let's pretend my disk 2 is the really important disk that I can't lose. We need to stop the array. And now with the array stopped, we can go to our disk 2 and I can unselect it and choose no device, which will take it out of the array. And it will report the drive as being missing. And with the device removed, of course it's still there. It's just now listed as an unassigned device. So now again, I'm going to start the array up in maintenance mode. And you can see here there's a warning saying that if I start up the array it'll disable the missing disk and then I should install a replacement as soon as possible. So I'm going to click on to start. And now with the array started back up we can see that disk 2 says that the contents are emulated and the disk is missing. Now this is good because what we can do now is we can run the XFS repair on the emulated contents of the disk. So should anything go wrong during the process, we're only going to be messing up the emulated disk and not the original disk, so we could then use that disk again and try different methods of recovering the data. So I'm going to click onto where it says disk 2 and then go down to check file system and just run the check, again with the flag hyphen n. So I'm just going to leave it to run for a moment and then click on to refresh and look at the results. Now as expected there's no actual corruption here and nothing's been actually changed because the no modify flag was set. Now if this was a disk that did have XFS corruption and not just an example, then now I'd run the repair without any flag at all so as to repair the file system. Yeah, and if needed, I could also run the hyphen L flag to delete the log if necessary. So obviously, you know, there's nothing wrong with this drive and I've just simulated this, so I'm not actually going to do anything. But after it being repaired, then the emulated contents here would then be able to be rebuilt onto a fresh drive. So you could just better put in another drive and then rebuild the array. Personally, I wouldn't really bother doing this myself. I would just run the XFS repair straight on the actual disk itself. But for someone who has really mission critical data on the drive, then it might be worth doing this. Okay, so I can't really think of anything else. So that brings me to the end of this video. Now, hopefully you're not going to actually need to use this video because I hope you don't have any XFS corruption on your server. But if you do, then hopefully this video will be useful. And if you just found this video interesting and you liked it, well, please hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, well, please subscribe to the channel. And I want to give a really huge thanks to all of my patrons out there and all of you people who support me. Thank you guys, it's you guys who really do make it possible for me to make these videos. And if you want to join that awesome group of people who do support me, well, you can find the links in the description. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.